Good evening, everyone. The Durham Public Schools Board of Education regular monthly meeting is now in session. At this time, we wish to extend a warm welcome to everyone who is joining us this evening. The purpose of this meeting is to inform our parents, staff, and constituents about the work aligned in, uh, with our mission to embrace, educate, and empower every student to innovate, serve, and lead. Tonight, the administration will be presenting information that will keep you up to date on our strategic plan. Thank you for taking the time to join us tonight. Our uh, Spanish interpreter will be uh, Martha Romo Urguiles. Uh, she is a Durham Public Schools ESL teacher with 35 years of experience. Ms. Romo Urguiles has 17 years of experience teaching and interpreting in the United States. She is our Spanish interpreter for tonight's meeting. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, buenas tardes a todos. Um, mi nombre es Marta Romo. Yo soy la intérprete por la noche y estoy contenta de estar aquí y ayudar a las familias con la interpretación. Gracias. Thank you. Um, our next item on our agenda is our moment of silence. In our moment of silence, I uh, would like to invite you all to think, to uh, pour in our minds towards our city and our county. There is trouble in our, in our city. Um, there's violence, there is um, lack of opportunity. There is um, a lot of trouble in Durham. And it's starting to show its face in different ways um, more publicly. We've, over the last couple of weeks or last week or so, we've had tragedies in our streets and many people are pointing fingers at each other about what needs to be done. We need to, um, as a county and out of city, we need to come together and not point fingers. We don't need any more com uh, committees to figure out how to stop killing each other. We don't need a commi committee to say stop killing each other, stop the violence. We need to be there, be out and helping understand the value of life. I think when we connect on the level of understanding the value and the intric intricacy of what life is or someone else's life, that's when things change. We need to, um, we can't always point at elected officials Right. Elected officials have voices that are, of course, elevated. But you don't need an elected official. You don't need to be an elected official to make a change. Elected officials make policies. People who are in the situations where violence is an is a outward expression of something internally don't care about those policies. We as our neighbors, and we as parents, and we as friends, uncles, aunts, mentors, have to make that connection. And so we, as a community, we have to, this is, this is not an elected official, uh, an, an elected official fix. This is a everyone fix. Everyone is on the same level here. Everyone, my voice is not louder than anybody else's in trying to correct this. Elected officials can gather, they can announce and get people together, but it's those people who are in the community who are the ones who have to make the change, help make the change, help foster that communication to those who are in need. So as we are in this moment of silence, I ask 
that we reflect on what can I do? When I say I, I mean you, when you're thinking to yourself. What can I do? Is there one person I can talk to? Is there one thing that I can do to maybe prevent something? And if all of us can come together and think like that, maybe there can be a shift. Let's not point fingers. Let's, let me do what I'm going to do. Let me do what change I can make. And if everybody can make a little bit of a change, maybe there's something we, that can be done. So as we think, as we have this moment of silence, please, let's think about our city, where we are, and the trouble that's rising. This isn't falling, rising. Please join me. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is um, celebrations. Be our guests. Board members, if you would uh, join us at the red carpet. It's a brand new school year, and most of our students are not here with us yet. So we will be uh, doing our traditional celebration of our students and teachers at our next board meeting in September. However, uh, it being a new school year, it's a good time to think about the new in the in among the people who serve our students and serve our schools. And we have had new teacher orientations all over the place in the last few days, uh, new employee onboarding, new blood coming to help Durham Public Schools be infused with energy and be supportive of every single student. I've been, I, was, I attended, um, DPS Equity 101 training uh, that every teacher uh, received yesterday. That commitment was 100% uh, loud and clear from our leaders and from our teachers themselves. You can see their pictures at the crowded auditorium on social media. Uh, we have welcomed a number of new principals to Durham Public Schools, and we would like them to be here tonight, and yet they are having their open houses. They're with their school communities tonight, and that is where they should be. Tonight, we are also welcoming new Durham Public Schools senior leadership uh, that has either been promoted or is new to Durham Public Schools since April of 2019. Um, and we are proud to introduce them to you, our community, tonight uh, for you to be welcomed as our parents and students and uh, community leaders are welcomed at each, after each Be Our Guest uh, event by walking our red carpet, and then we'll take a quick picture at the end. These are the senior leaders who have joined D Durham Public Schools because they believe in our mission of ig and vision of igniting the limitless potential of every student in Durham Public Schools. Uh, they have signed on to our strategic plan. They've signed on to a belief that every child in Durham can succeed. And I'm proud to introduce them to you. And I, as I read their name, I ask them to walk the red carpet, uh, be welcomed by our board members, and then we'll take a quick picture. Julius Monk, Chief Operating Officer. <laughs> Thomas Griffiths, Executive Director for Construction and Capital Planning. Travis Anderson, Executive Director for Fac Facilities and Maintenance. Benjamin Brown had to leave us because of his child's open house, uh, Executive Director for Information Technology. Dr. Dietrich Morrison-Danner, Executive Director for Professional Learning and Federal Programs. <laughs> Unable to join us tonight due to a conflict, Jeremy Tucker, Director of Arts Programs. <laughs> Dr. Patricia Hollingsworth, Director of Marketing and Community Engagement. <laughs> w. Matthew Palmer, Director of Strategic Planning Initiatives. And last but not least, Melody Marshall, Director of Student Assignment. The people standing uncomfortably because they're waiting to have their photos taken are not 
the most important people in Durham Public Schools, nor is the school board, nor is our superintendent or our cabinet. The most important people in Durham Public Schools are educators and our students. They are the ones whom we support every minute of every day, and we are all proud to do that, and we welcome these newest members of the team. Thank you for being here, and if you'll just join this, uh, join the crowd and play a game of quick, a uh, quick game of sardines, and uh, we'll take a picture. And that concludes the celebrations portion of the evening. Thank you very much, uh, Chip. All right, our next item on our agenda is agenda review and approval. I move approval of the agenda. Second. It's been moved and properly seconded that we approve the agenda as presented. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, please use the same sign. Passes unanimously. Next item is the approval of the Board of Education meeting minutes for June 27th, 2019. That was our last regular monthly meeting. And July 20th, 2019, which was the board retreat. Move approval. Second. It's been moved and properly seconded that we approve the meeting minutes for June 27th, 2019 and July 20th, 2019. Any further discussion? The, Natalie. My only um, minor edit was um, there's a speaker in the June minutes that is from actually Village of Wisdom rather than Village Wisdom. So Amber Majors spoke on behalf of Village of Wisdom would be the only edit that I the, saw there. The edit for the yep. name, the correction of the name. Yep. Okay. All right. That'll be noted. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, please use the same sign. Passes unanimously. The next item on our agenda is general public comment. Um, a quick review of the rules for general public comment. First, please state your name. If you are speaking for an organization, please state your name and the name of the organization. Second, speakers are asked, asked to present their comments in a specified time, usually three minutes. It'll be three minutes. That'll be three minutes today. When the yellow light comes on, you have about a minute left. Please start winding up your remarks. When the red light comes on, it will beep that indicates your time is up. Complaints about named staff, students, or parents should not be voiced in open session. I'll stop there really quickly. So that means if you have a, an issue with a specific parent or a specific student or teacher, um, we try not to use the name. Now, if you're speaking for someone, you know, in favor of someone, you can, you can use the name. It's just, you know, when you're with complaints about named staff, that's what it says, complaints. I, I, th I understood the policy to be not to mention staff by name because employees have rights as well, and that I didn't think That's it applied. That's in complaints. That's just complaints. Uh, if you're 
I the was support looking of. at. I think we should go through with what you've got for this evening and then we can maybe talk between meetings about perhaps revising it slightly to make sure we're in compliance with the policy. Okay, well, I'm gonna read it as it's presented here. Complaints about named staff, students, or parents should not be voiced in open session. However, we are very interested in hearing your concerns with regard to public education, safety of students, or the operation of the school system. Finally, the board members will listen carefully and consider the comments, but we do not engage in a discussion with speakers. The first, we have 11 speakers, and this first speaker will be um, uh, Reverend Dr. Linda Kerr Norflet. I'm hoping I got that right there. And then um, the next one will be Kevon Cole. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to come and speak on behalf of Wendell Tab. He uh, was a former student of mine. I uh, was chair of the NCCU Theater Department. 34 years involved with it and also head of arts at the university, the liberal arts program. I'm here um, because I've been informed that Wendell Tab has had difficulty getting the kind of support he's needed for a program I've watched for over 30 some years. And over that 30 some years, I have seen him direct students large, large numbers of students in productions and plays that were inspiring, that lift that their lives, that exercise their talents and so forth. I have seen him work from the beginning, work on all areas of the theater. And it's important because in his training, he was uh, taught to be a director. He learned how to produce. Um, technical direction, um, lighting, designing, all of those things that are necessary to make theater happen. And in his training, there were specific people that were hired to do those duties so that one person wouldn't be uh, required to handle all of the um, activities needed to bring a full production to its fruition. When I um, watched his growth over the years uh, in all of these areas, um, I just wondered how he was able to get all of it done. I wondered how he was able to get the sets up, get the lighting done, get um, sound, um, costumes, and so forth. But he did it, he grabbed folk to help him and so forth to pull it all together. I'm concerned that after all he's done for the number of students that have come through him over the years, the training they've had, um, that he has to go without something that he needs. He's been, meant a lot to the school system I know because I've watched every year uh, the productions. I've watched every year the number of students he's put on the stage. Uh, he didn't uh, discriminate at all. Those are dancers, singers, actors, or what have you. All right. But my concern is that he is not getting the support, the technical support that he needs for the programs that he has done over the last 30 some years. Uh, he has received support from the parents and the community and I'm asking that he get support from the Board of Education. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Mr. Cole. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Kayvon Cole, and I'm going to speak on the behalf of uh, Wendell Tab in the theater department. Uh, I was once a former student, 
uh, personally seen uh, Mr. Tab forced to work extra hours uh, to put together uh, a show uh, every year. And he has been doing this for over 30 years. And I've noticed that schools like DSA, uh, Jordan, and, um, and Riverside, uh, they, when they asked to receive technical directors, uh, they, they got it. Um, however, you're, you're, you're talking about a guy, a man that has been dedicating his heart, um, earned time, uh, tears, sweat into so many kids. Uh, and I want to talk about that uh, because even with that, he's given so many kids opportunities uh, that a lot of other people will never see as adults and such as going out of the country. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Tab has gotten so many kids to pretty much every continent on this planet except Antarctica. I don't know any other teacher or any other, uh, any other Durham Public School employee that has ever done anything that astounding. Um, and, you know, he's been asking for the support and the things he's need uh, to help him succeed, to help his students succeed, and yet he's never received it. Um, I think that's a major concern. And I'm speaking on the behalf of my youth and my generation. Uh, and this is very emotional, um, honestly, because he, he doesn't ask for much. He really doesn't ask for much. And um, if I want to say anything else, like, uh, for instance, I've personally seen Hillside uh, hire coaches for sports, for sports reasons and for, for to make sure that the school itself succeed in championships and to make sure those kids succeed. But what about the, the theater department? Uh, you know, I think that that is very important. A lot of times, kids that do attend Hillside High School would not have any other opportunity at any other school. Uh, the reason why they're at Hillside High School is because that opportunity presented itself. Uh, it's, it's very important. And that was just pretty much the only thing that I really had to say is, you know, please, if you can, uh, please give him the support that he needs. Uh, this program has been very important, especially to my mother. She's also attended this school. Uh, Mr. Tad was also her, te uh, uh, her teacher as well. Uh, this is a, a major thing for me. Uh, so if you can... Just please take that into consideration. Thank, Thank you. you. Our next speaker is Renee Nixon. My name is Renee Nixon, and I am a 1989 graduate of Hillside High School. My mother graduated from Hillside in 55, and my sister graduated in 82. I'm also the first Miss Hillside alumni. So my love for Hillside runs very deep. I was in the drama club all four years at Hillside. Actually, when I started Hillside, there wasn't a drama class. There was just a club. When I started Hillside, Donna Bowie was in charge of the drama club. And she left Hillside after my freshman year to be in a little movie, you might have heard of it, called The Color Purple. Anybody heard of that one? <laughs> yeah, she was in that movie. And that's when Mr. Tab came in, and he took over. And he has done amazing things. He took our drama program from above average because there's nothing at Hillside that's average. <laughs> okay? <laughs> from above average to the excellent level that is at now. And he's done that with, by himself for the most part. There hasn't been anybody standing next to him. But you already know this. You know how amazing this program is. We don't have to tell you that. So the question becomes, why can he not get the support from you all that he deserves? I mean, what is the reason? Is it that you can't afford to do it? And if that's what it is, let us know. Or is it something that is above your heads? Is it something that's out of your reach that you can't do? And if it is, let us know, because we can go to the next level. Trust me, we have no shame. We will go to the state. Actually, the state has a surplus of money. And I don't mind going to see Governor Cooper. Anybody want to roll? We can go to see Governor Cooper and talk. 
to him to get some of that money because we're supposed to get $125. I'll take just $100 and take that 25 to send it to Hillside if that's what I need to do to make my school, school better because I think that we have that right. And I want to know why y'all won't support and help our school. Hillside's not asking for a technical director just for fun. We need it. It is needed. So I'm putting it to you like this. I'm putting it to you simply. Either you all join us or move out the way so we can get it done. Because we, as Hornets, will get it done. We always do and we always will. Thank you. Uh, the next speaker is Darrell Pantil. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Um, you said something very moving when you said foster the relationships. Durham Public Schools uniting limited potential. Hillside did that to me. I graduated in 2003. I'm a former actor of the year. When we talk about sets, lighting, designs, I learned that at Hillside. How did I learn it? It wasn't from a technical director. It was from Mr. Wendell Tab. I learned it because we had outside entities coming in on the weekends, putting on shows, and they had lighting and design members. So I worked with them. You know how our students learn before that? We passed it down from each other. I learned lighting from another person who went to Hillside. I learned sound from another person that went to Hillside. So even though we didn't have that technical director, we still were able to learn. I think we have a bigger picture going on. I think Mr. Tav's request is based on vision. He's a visionary. If you think at what Hillside started and where we are today, 30 years ago, if you would have said this program would have a 1,200 plus seat theater, have a chance to touch thousands of lives, travel international, I think we'd all shake our heads. I was there when all the principal changes happened at Hillside. I saw all the good, bad, and ugly. In people, in students, in families, and friends, we all argued. But at the end of the day, Hillside was the focus. We still came together. I drove from Wilmington, North Carolina tonight just to tell you guys how important it is to support this program. It's one thing to say we need a technical director. It's another thing to say we need vision. Mr. Tao will eventually retire. And then what? But we need a technical director then? He's requesting it now to put it in motion. That's what visionaries do. Now, it's been about 16 years since I graduated. And I feel like I'm going back in time. Because some of the same issues we're discussing now, whether it's violence in the city, whether it's fostering relationships, we're still talking about them today. I remember having a conversation when I was a student and I asked Mr. Tad, this was around 2002, how come we don't have this? Speaking about Riverside and some of the programs that they had, we had some students come over and I got to learn from them as well from a different school. Hillside has always found its way, regardless of the support level. The community has always picked up the tab. I'm not pointing any blame or pointing any fingers. Our job has always been to work together and be on the same team. This community showed up tonight in support of that team. Regardless of what happens to this meeting, and I understand you can't speak, and I know there are legal battles going on in the background, but respectfully, please continue to support our school and see its vision move forward. Thank you. The next speaker is gonna be Sonia um, Shearer. Hello. Hello. Fort Brown. I'm Sonia Scherer, and I'm here on behalf of the drama parents, past and current for Hillside High School's prestigious and talented drama department. And when I say current, my daughter graduated in 2017, and I have no roots to Hillside because I'm from a different city. 
as most know, our beloved director, Mr. Wendell Tabb, is going through a lawsuit that we're not going to discuss here. But as concerned parents of Hillside, we come before you with several questions. What is the reasoning behind the denial of a technical theater position in class for Hillside High School? Why has Mr. Taz's request been denied for 15 years? What is different about Hillside from the other schools in Durham that won't afford our kids the same educational opportunity and benefit from having a technical theater class? Our kids would love to have the ability to learn from a professional and use those learned skills at the school and outside the school in potential future career endeavors, just as kids at other schools do. What are we at Hillside missing that our kids are being denied this opportunity? Everyone in this room knows that Mr. Tabb is fully invested in not only the kids who are under his tutelage, but also the community at large. The kids always come first. He has brought positive light to Hillside, the Durham community as a whole, and the Durham public school system. His dedication has been second to none and should never be questioned. He sometimes works from morning to morning, taking a break to go home and change clothes. This dedication provides the opportunity for you all to come and march into sold out shows and pose and take smiling pictures with celebrities. He has worked tirelessly for not only Hillside, but a plethora of community groups and events at the school and outside the school. Even without a technical director, he was responsible for setting up district events and other events held at the school. As large as our theater program is, as much community as we bring together, as many sold out shows that are held, he has not one assistant. Why is that? This all seems like an easy fix to us, drama parents. I'm sure there's the ability either at the superintendent level or the school principal level to, to create a position that should have been created 15 years ago. We want our kids rightfully deserve. We want what our kids rightfully deserve. We want Mr. Tab to be compensated for not doing his job as a drama teacher not for being the drama department director, but for being all that and also working tirelessly in the role of technical director for so long. Your continued denials make no sense to us. Parents, again, we don't understand. Do they make sense to you? So what I would just like to elaborate is that my daughter is a third year student at Howard. She met Mr. Tabb when she was eight. She thought that Hillside was almost a college because she was like, I'm going to drama for Hillside at eight. That school afforded her opportunity to go to China, to Cuba. She was one of the finalists in the Rising Stars at DPAC. And she's now furthering that potential at Howard. So once again, we're just wanting to know why is it so hard to get that position there. Thank you. The next speaker is Deidre Hines. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Again, my name is Deidre Hines and I come here on behalf of class of 98, Hillside High School class of 98. And I can also speak for 96, 97, 98, 99, because during my matriculation at Hillside, we were a tight niche group. We supported the arts department, period, at Hillside. We ran the band, we ran dance, and we also ran that drama department, and we were the best in the US. Not the state, not the city, but the US of A. Mr. Tab has kept us off the streets. Mr. Tab has provided plenty of opportunities for the students to grow on his own. 
And I feel like, you know, you guys should consider that. All of the work that Mr. Tab has done. He has created superstars. You've heard of them. So how do you think Danny Glover and Suge Ave would feel as they stood on the stage last year um, if they knew that Durham Public Schools wasn't supporting Mr. Tab? How would they feel if they knew that Mr. Tab put on that show by himself? They've been in plenty of movies, and it's set directors. It's a director for every entity that, that entails in a, putting on a movie. So the plays are the same thing. And Mr. Tab had to do it by himself. Mr. Tab deserves to be paid for the, for the work that he has done, period. He gave his life to us. He had a family, a child, that he didn't get to see plenty of days and plenty of nights for us, for my class, for me. I was a dancer in most of his plays. I've even sung in his plays, you know? And so I could be somewhere with 100 kids by now. <laughs> Mr. Tab kept me focused. He always had talks with us and, and just gave us dreams and visions. That's who he was. He, he simply loved us. And we, we see this as a simple act of racial discrimination, period. And I keep saying period because it's serious. We like to put a period on the end of things that we're serious about. But don't take that period too seriously because with all of us here, it's not going to be a period. It's not. We're going to keep going. You guys are going to give him help or we'll go over your heads. Okay? Because he deserves it. He shouldn't have to beg 15 years for help. It took 15 years to get him some help, and that doesn't make any sense. It hurts us. It hurts our heart. It hurts Mr. Tab. So if you guys could please consider giving him the back pay that he deserves for the job that he did, that the other schools were afforded a technical director for. Thank you. Um, the next speaker is Anita Perkins. Good evening. My name is Anita Perkins, and I'm the very proud parent of a Hillside High School graduate and an upcoming high school sophomore at Hillside High School. My daughter is currently a sophomore at UNC Charlotte. She is a theater major and a journalism minor. So my daughter's freshman year, I asked her, I said, well, how are your classes going? And she said, you know what, Mom, my theater classes, she said, they're, they're going to be a piece of cake. Mr. Tab taught us this already. I said, okay, that's great. Interestingly enough, this is her sophomore year. She has a technical class, lighting specifically. And she told me, she said, you know what, Mom? She said, I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to represent Hillside. And I thought to myself, you know what? She gets that confidence from Mr. Tab. Mr. Tab has tirelessly poured into all of our students, theater and non-theater students, over and over again. It just boggles my mind that our entire city supports and rallies behind Hillside High School when the celebrities come in town. But when there's a simple request for Hillside High School to get a technical director, there I don't see any rallying. We see this request uh, as a necessity to provide our students the opportunity to be exposed to different well-paying careers in the arts. Our students deserve this. We as parents are law-abiding citizens. We pay our taxes. And we feel that our taxes should be directed to where the need is. The need is at Hillside High School. The need is for a technical director. The need is for Mr. Tab to be assisted and even partially compensated for the work he's done. Now, the overarching issue is not what the media has portrayed. The need is for a technical director at Hillside High School. The last thing I'd like to say about this issue is that it's not going away. We as parents live in Durham, again, where we pay our taxpayer dollars, and we expect our dollars to be used to hire a technical director at Hillside High School. Thank you for this opportunity. I appreciate your time. Thank you. 
Next speaker is Timothy um, Faison. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Timothy Faison, and I am here this evening representing the National Alumni Association of Hillside High School. I stand here tonight before former colleagues, uh, former uh, uh, classmates of Hillside High School. But more importantly, I stand here tonight as a board member of the Alumni Association, and not just to stand and ask for continued support of our beloved Wendell Tab, but more importantly, our support of the students of Hillside. Uh, it brings questions to mind, what makes Hillside somewhat different from other schools, such as Jordan, such as Durham School of the Arts, such as Riverside? And the reason why I brought those three schools up is because systematically, uh, the, the record has shown that they have received the same support that the drama department has requested over 15 years. So it makes me wonder what makes Hillside somewhat different from these other schools that is made up of students just like the students at Hillside. But through it all, I hear the words of Dr. Maya Angelou poem where she says, still I rise. And so I am here tonight to represent all of the alumni of the National Alumni Association of Hillside High School and say, when you support Mr. Tapp, you're supporting Hillside, and you're supporting what Hillside stands for. And on a personal note, I am a product of the drama department. I am a proud member of the class of 2005. Mr. Tab, because of Mr. Tab, I'm able to stand here tonight and to speak the way I am speaking tonight. Because of Mr. Tab, you have doctors. Because of Mr. Tab, you have lawyers. Because of Mr. Tab, you have actors and actresses. Because of Mr. Tab, you have people that contribute on a daily basis to this world that we live in today. So when you support Hillside, when you support Wendell Tab, you're not just supporting him, but you're supporting all of the people that his life has impacted. So because of Mr. Tab, here we are. Because of Mr. Tab, here we are to stand to let you know, as you've been heard, uh, told tonight, ain't no stopping us now. Why? Because we are on the move. Why? We're not on the move just for Wendell Tab, but we're on the move for Hillside High School. And as I close, I think about the words to the song of our alma mater, Hillside High, oh Hillside High, we cherish thee with honor. God bless. Thank you. The next speaker is Cedric Rogers. Good evening, uh, board. My name is Cedric Rogers uh, from Hillside High from 1979. Uh, it's an honor and a pleasure to stand here to um, stand for Mr. Tab, for the things that he has done, but on this, the personal note of what he's done, uh, even from Dr. Norfolk to his beginning, he started in the fences play. And in doing so, my daughter was Raynell, and she was three. She's now 35. So in saying that, I stand here as well for Mr. Tab because when he had personal issues, his father passed. He didn't know what to do. He was a friend of mine. I gave his father the opportunity to have honors for burial because he served our United States of America. But it wasn't, it just didn't just stop there. He said, uh, Cedric, uh, my father was from Virginia, and we wanted to do a service there as well. I stood by the casket for his father in my uniform for 32 years of my service to the service. So I'm doing that in respect for Mr. Tab. Because we started so young in his career, 
I'm standing here now because of his career has expounded and went far beyond the doors of Hillside. And because of that, I want you all to know the strong and willingness that that young man has put in his life outside of his family. Outside of that, he given it to Hillside. He's neglected his family, literally, not knowing how to do things when his family passes away and not knowing what to do. But I came back for him. I was honored to do that. So if he needs some technical support, it starts with one person doing that. And technically, I'm here for him. So that's what we're doing. And I love to yield all of the time, because it's just a few moments, all of the time to him. It belongs to him. He's done that. He's allowed my daughter to grow up in a drama field. She graduated from North Carolina, from, and, uh, from St. Aug University in the drama department because of him. She started at three. All of my family, the Rogers family, nine of us came from Hillside. And I'm proud to say that because of Mr. Tab. We're standing here for that. So we're going we're, we're to stand for him. We're going to support him. And we're going to give him the technical support that he's asking for. We're going to give it to him. But we're going to give it to him through all of us. It starts with one. You said today, think of the minds of the children now. That we, it takes one person to run this community. It just takes us. It starts with us, one. So those children that are getting malangled and, and, and killed in, in Durham, it does take one. And he gave me that opportunity to be one. And we are one. So let's give him one technical support. Thank you. Thank you. And the next speaker is Alan Gaddis. Hello, school board. My name is Alan Gaddis, and I'm the chaplain for the Hillside National Alumni Association. On behalf of Mr. Tab, I want to say I was one of his first students he did his uh, uh, student teaching with. And at that time, Hillside didn't even have a drama department at all. So some of us didn't even get a chance to do as these kids are doing. He has done great exploits for people. And we just like you just said, I talked about the killing. Mr. Tab has given this door's open, drama department has opened the door for some of these kids. It could be a safe haven. We don't never know where some of these kids may be. It may have kept some of these kids from being murdered, getting into things. But it takes a, a teacher that care about a student, it makes a whole difference. And as you have heard all everybody have said today, the great accolades, award-winning things about Mr. Tab, I ask you all, as you all assemble together, as you make your decision, to give him some help. And I will say this, and if you don't give him any help, that will speak volumes about you all and what we really think about. Do they care about our students in the Durham Public School System? Thank you. And our last speaker for tonight is India Jimenez. Good evening. When I signed up, I said, you know what? I said, I don't know what I'm going to say, but it's all came to me as I've heard several people speak tonight. And these words behind you that say mission and vision, um, I think about how Mr. Tab, he walks and lives that every day that he has entered the, day, the doors at Hillside. As a child growing up, my school that I went to, two hours away from here, a little small town um, by the name of Weldon, we took various field trips here to see performances. And I was very inspired by that. 
And over the years, it came back to me more and more when I decided, when I became a mom and decided where I wanted to live with my children. And I said, I want my daughter, because at the time I only had one child. I said, I want my daughter to have, you know, so many opportunities. And I felt like Durham was a place for that. And sure enough, we ended up being here. Fast forward, fourth grade, my daughter was sitting in the audience at Hillside. I was a chaperone on that field trip. She was a student at Oak Grove Elementary. We attended a performance, and to see her face and so many other children's faces light up at what they seen on the stage, black girls, black boys, Hispanic of all races on stage and feeling as though that could be her someday, and to this day, she is one of those students that is on that stage. And what I would say to you is that if anybody deserves the support, it's Mr. Wendell Tapp. He has earned it. Turn on your TVs at any news station when we have, when the season, when our theater season kicks off, and you are guaranteed to see Mr. Tapp and all of these wonderful people that he hosts and the students host. So I ask you, to please consider his request and honor it. If you're about what you say with your mission and your vision, you will deliver. Thank you. Thank you. All right, the next, um, that concludes general public comment. The next item on the agenda is consent items. We have two to consider, is budget calendar, Fiscal budget calendar for fiscal year 2019-2020, and then the budget amendment number three for 2018-2019. I move that we accept the consent agenda. Second. I, I do have one request. Sure. Uh, is Mr. Lesur here? There. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to vote for this because this is the first budget amendment. It would help me in the, if for the future budget amendments if, we, if it was possible to get a, a concise summary of, of, of important changes that we should highlight in there. I, I acknowledge, I shouldn't acknowledge this in public, but I'll acknowledge after about page 53 or so, I'm starting to I, I get a little mind numb. Uh, so if there's that's just a, a, a request for future um, summaries, the, a, a, a concise a executive summary of what some of the major highlights are, and that would be helpful to me. Okay. Noted. Was it seconded? Yes. Okay. Uh, Natalie, did you have? No, my, my only curiosity is is because we know the General Assembly is delayed. If we'll have an update on what we're thinking budget-wise and what's going on with the state anytime, maybe that'll come at a work session. What are y'all thinking? I mean, I know we have continuation funds to keep going, and I thought others might have questions and thoughts about that. Uh, that's correct. Uh, we have continuation budget uh, until the General Assembly and the governor come to an agreement on a budget, we will, we will maintain last year's funding levels for the purpose of expending teachers uh, and central office staff will be this paid the same that they were last year um, from that standpoint until a decision is finally made and then everybody will get paid retroactively if they come to an agreement that there are pay increases in this school year. And is that that's true for local supplements? Basically, everything's frozen until the budget's actually passed because we don't, we can't calculate until we know what it is. Is that right? That is correct. Uh, if they make changes, um, it could have a domino right. effect right. to local, and we ha might have to make some adjustments at that point in time. Right. We hope it doesn't come to that. Right. But it's, but it's actually everything looking is like frozen. It. Yes, yeah. sir. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, definitely, we are monitoring that. I think the last time that uh, the session took longer was around October. But uh, if this is going to go all the way to December, I think at some point we're going to reconvene and see what we can do with local supplements. Just a matter of time. We're waiting. And this is becoming the norm. 
this is the way it normally, I mean, from a budget standpoint, having to do a continuation? This is the way it has been in the past. It came to, they were very close to getting out at the end of June, early July, for the last four, four years or so. And now we're going back into a possible delay, delay, delay. I think this, this stalemate is particularly alarming to me because the, this is the first time that the governor can override vetoes and I mean, can veto and, and the House and Senate cannot override. Um, and so they don't have a supermajority, but there hasn't been House and Senate leadership calling folks back to come to the table. And so I would say if our community is, is interested in advocating um, for Medicaid expansion, which is a major initiative that would help so many people in our community and getting raises for teachers, that advocacy needs to go to the leadership of the House and Senate. Our Durham delegation stands committed and ready to come to the table. So thank you. That's helpful. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, please use the same sign. Consent items pass unanimously. We're going to take a second here. Um, uh, it seems as if there were a couple of people that come in after the sign-up sheet uh, was removed for a public comment. I think it was two people. Is that correct? Two people. Two people. And so I'm going to allow them the, uh, the opportunity to do general public comment. We don't have public comment for academic services, so I'll go ahead and do that. So the two people who were here, uh, who came in, who were looking to do public comment, if you could please come to the podium, I would ask that you state your name um, and continue on forward. Good evening. How's everyone doing? Uh, my name is Kinsby Blunt. I am a former uh, student at Hillside High School. Um, Mr. Tab has been a mentor of mine for over 20 years now. Um, I think everyone here knows the importance of um, the Hillside Drama Department, um, and the majority of us have attended uh, a program or a production at Hillside. Um, and everyone, the majority of us knows the quality that Hillside brings. Um, and that is because of the, the vision and dream of Mr. Wendell Tad. Um, but what a lot of people don't know is what goes on behind the scenes. Um, it's kind of hard, you know, because I've witnessed firsthand for, for a number of years now um, the testimonies of the students that have come through Hillside. Um, we have what we call pretty much at the end of each production uh, a senior circle. And that's where the seniors all gather and the students that are not seniors, um, we basically cover um, the seniors that are going out into the world. Uh, we pray for them and so forth and so on. And during this time, we find out a lot of the struggles that the students have to go through. Um, I firsthand witnessed um, people say that they were literally on the way home to commit suicide um, before they were introduced to Mr. Tab and the drama department. So we're here today as a community to ask you all to help us to continue to help Hillside save lives. Um, we would not have students here today if it was not for this drama department. Um, I don't think a lot of people realize that. Um, a lot of kids don't have family. Uh, we actually have my class 1998 with Deidre Hines and um, Melody Marshall um, put together a drive basically to support um, the homeless students that are at Hillside. We have homeless students that are at Hillside. Uh, this drama department also helps those homeless people. Um, we're just basically here asking you um, to help us save lives. Continue to support Hillside Drama and Mr. Tab. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening. Good evening. My name is Ron Hunter, and I'm a citizen of Durham and a friend of Hillside Drama and a supporter of Wendell Tab. 
I've known Mr. Tab for over 35 years, I was reminded of lately. And during that period, we've done a number of things at a number of different levels, and they've all been for the good of the students that he supports and he dreams of advancing. I've never met someone so dedicated, so willing to give of himself, so willing to ask for others. I think all the things you epitomize, you'll find in Mr. Tab. He's represented you, Hillside High, Durham, North Carolina, the US, me, everybody in this room very well everywhere he's gone because he has a good soul, a good heart. He cares about his students. He cares about his craft. He accepts nothing better than the best he can give and the best he can make of the people that he touches, including me and others, not just his students. He commands of everybody that he gets near that you give your best and all you can to advance whatever the cause you're in. And he's not in causes that drag us down. He's involved in causes that uplift us. And you've heard the students. You've heard the stories about students that he's given a chance. You've seen, I've seen the actors. I stood in, in a sp space with Danny Glover this fall and listened to him lament how much he was proud of the program, how much he was willing to come back. That speaks pretty highly for Durham, North Carolina, a small high school in Durham, represented by someone who has the vision that says he will reach out to anyone. We need to support him. We really do. I think he's given all he can as a person, and he continues to give. And he doesn't give for himself. He gives for the people that he represents, those students that he's so committed about so committed to. I've seen it. I've seen how they feel about him, and I've seen how he feels about them. I think we need to support that. There's so much in this city, in this country, in this world that's not good and well-meaning. He's kind, he's caring, and he's bettering the youth in our community. I think we need to support that. I thank you for the time. Thank you. All right, going back to our um, uh, regular agenda. The next item on the agenda is academic services. Amazing how you just turn and the technology is right there. Good evening, board members. Tonight we are presenting our annual academic services contract and they are before you this evening for approval. These partnerships will allow us to continue to implement the strategies that have been identified within our strategic plan goals, specifically regarding priority one, to increase academic achievement. Our recommendations this evening are based on the academic needs of our children, supports for our curriculum adoption implementation, as well as feedback from stakeholders and monitoring the usage of many of these partnerships. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce Ms. Chanel Sidberry, Executive Director of K-12 Curriculum and Instruction, who will take us through the specific contracts and partnerships. At the end, of course, we will take questions and discussion and look forward to hoping that you will approve these contracts so that we can continue our academic year. The children come on Monday. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Hardy. Good evening, board, um, Dr. Mabinga and cabinet. It is a pleasure to be before you to bring forth our academic services contracts from the Department of Curriculum and Instruction. The administration seeks approval for the following services. Number one is Achieve 3000, which provides differentiated reading and writing activities that are nonfiction and informational text. This is a K-5 resource. The next being CERTICA, formerly known as TE or Case 21. They provide us our MOI and EOI benchmark formative assessments. This is a resource that supports students in grades 312. 
Curriculum Associates uh, provides us with adaptive diagnostic supports in reading and mathematics for our students in grades three through eight. Hand to Mind is a new contract and is directly connected to our previously adopted K-5 math curriculum, Eureka Mathematics. Hand to Mind provides students and teachers with the necessary manipulatives to support the core curriculum adoption. The next one being Mastery Connect, also a new contract, which provides formative assessment capabilities to teachers while decreasing our dependency on purchasing scanners for scoring in the future. This resource will be available to students grades 3-12. And then lastly, Reading Plus, uh, which is a reading comprehension tool that provides students with increasingly more complex text to push them towards reading efficiency. It is utilized at the secondary level. In the next few slides, I will provide the details of each potential proposal and its per teacher or per pupil expenditure. The first being Achieve 3000. DPS piloted Achieve 3000 last year in the 18-19 school year in response to the need for exposure to more informational text. Achieve provides access to non-fiction materials that can be aligned to our current pacing. Additionally, the program measures students' Lexile levels and based on their consistent completion of Achieve 3000 articles, uh, they will have level sets based on their performance. Last year, Achieve 3000 was a grant to us, and DPS only supported the accompanying professional learning, learning needed for effective implementation. Last year, we had six schools that participated, and they started around the middle of the year. These, school, these six schools were selected last year based on interest. Uh, as we closely analyzed our student data, for formative assessment data, we noted these five schools, Bethesda, Burton, Eno Valley, Hope, Hope Valley and Parkwood, and we are noting this resource in response to their need for increased text for their, their incoming cohort reading level needs. We would like to continue our partnership with Achieve 3000 while closely monitoring its impact on student achievement. The next one being Certica, formerly known as Case 21. Certica provides us with our middle of the year and end of the year district benchmarks. This resource provides schools with formative assessment data, which helps provide insight as to how our students are progressing towards standards mastery and also towards college and career readiness. The next one being Curriculum Associates. Curriculum Associates is what you will hear our schools and our teachers call iReady. iReady is a school, a, is a resource that supports our multi-tiered system of support, so our MTSS process. It is used in grades three through eight for mathematics and in grades four and five for reading. It provides us with three supports, the first being the diagnostic, which is a computer adapt, adaptive support that pinpoints uh, specific individual sub skills that students need in order to be proficient in reading and math. The teacher's toolbox resource is popular among our teachers. It provides online instructional resources for teachers and instructional materials in readings and reading and in math. It has been a standard resource in Durham available to, to teachers and students for the last few years and is in, uh, aligned to our enrichment and intervention expectations at the school level. The last being a directed support instructional tool, and the instruction portion provides recommendations and lessons directly to students that are automatically de delivered based on the diagnostic needs of each student. It is truly a personalized tool. The next one is new, hand to mind, and the writers of Eureka Math, our newly adopted core curriculum, have laid out the resources, and the board will remember that I laid all those resources and manipulatives out for review previously. Uh, these kits contain the essential tools needed for a uh, effective implementation of Eureka Mathematics. These tools were specifically chosen to develop student understanding, to minimize distractions at the elementary level, and to maximize coherence among the grades. The kits range in price based on the resources at each grade level, and it is a complement to our newly adopted K-5 Eureka Mathematics. The next one is Mastery Connect. Mastery Connect is a cutting edge formative assessment tool. The goal of formative assessment is to monitor student learning and to provide ongoing feedback that can be used by educators to improve their teaching and to, imp and to provide students feedback to improve their learning. 
Mastery Connect supports teachers in all content areas 312 in creating and delivering formative assessments in a way that best fits their classrooms. Teachers can literally build assessments in the platform, use their own assessments and upload them as a PDF, or they can deliver assessments in an online modality. They may opt to deliver uh, resources and materials in any way that best suits them. And this is truly a differ differentiated instructional tool. Because formative assessment is ongoing, Mastery Connect will assist our teachers by cutting down on grading by the use of the grade cam. The grade cam allows teachers to create bubble sheets and scan them using any camera, their cell phone, or their standard DPS laptop to gr instantly grade uh, assessments and provide instructional grouping uh, for students instantaneously. Parents and guardians can also monitor student progress with Mastery Connect by using the Mastery Connect Parent Portal. It will serve as a valuable tool to engage our students, parents, and teachers in conversations around learning and expectations necessary to develop college and career readiness. Okay. Reading Plus is an adaptive reading program. Oh, here's one little clip from uh, Mastery Connect. So a teacher will log into Mastery Connect. They will select their assessment that they would like to give. It will create a bubble sheet for them. Uh, we can reduce paper by um, laminating those bubble sheets, and teachers can use those over and over again. And then a, a teacher will opt to scan their test. And if you look in the far right-hand corner in that little box that says ready, you will see a teacher modeling where they just literally hold up that bubble sheet. It scans instantly. And on the far left-hand side, you will see that students are color-coded by mastery, almost mastery, needing some additional support. So this will cut down on the grading, paper, and our dependency on technology for scanning purposes in the future. Reading Plus is an adaptive reading program that integrates comprehension, vocabulary, motivation, and reading efficiency into one program. It supports educators by providing differentiated literacy instruction for students in grades 6 through 12. This is a research-based dynamic program that gives educators a 360 view at students and provide personalized instruction and silent reading practice so that they can become independent learners. This instructional tool is for a subset of our 612 students that will be identified by each school based on their individual needs. The cost is about $50 per student. And on the board packet on pages, page, pages 136 and 137, you will find our last year, last year report on the multi-site reading progress report. You will note at the very bottom, Durham experienced almost an increase in two, re two reading levels in our participating students last year. We had some schools that had in excess of four, in, four, level in, uh, four levels increase in their reading proficiency. Pages 136 and page 137. We would like to continue this support and will continue to monitor closely our school usage and the instructional impact on our students. This slide pro provides a contract summary. Uh, this year, our fiscal ask is a reduction from the previous year uh, in close to $50,000. I would like to thank the board again for their investment in our recent core curriculum adoptions in K-5 math and also in 612 ELA. Because of this investment, we can now rely on the scaffolds that our standard core curriculums provide our students and our teachers, and that will heavily, has heavily impacted our partnership with curriculum associates. So you will see a sizable reduction in over $192,000 with that partnership. I would also like to note that discovery education has now been phased out and discontinued. Uh, this was a three-year process. We began analyzing our usage in 2016 and 17. We made a slight reduction in the 17-18 year based on schools that had less than 250 logins in a school year. And this year, we've analyzed our usage, and it has a stark decrease in the, in the usage at our schools. Um, for this year, we have discontinued uh, discovery education, but we have provided our teachers and schools with a list of alternative uh, websites that offer high quality and curriculum aligned videos that will enhance and extend our curriculum um, in our schools. 
We will continue to vet resources and frequently update this list as the options change every day for instructional tools. There are also videos and resources embedded in our, in our standard curriculum units and curriculum maps and additional supports will continue to be added so that our teachers do not feel the loss of this resource. For learning A to Z, we were able to negotiate that contract in the 18-19 two year, uh, school year for two years. And so it is not uh, noted this year. Our contract that was approved in 18-19 will carry us over to fall 2020. We will continue to analyze the usage and the effectiveness of this resource and come forth with the board in fall 2020 with a thoughtful recommendation around this resource. We will continue to monitor and continue to continue to make fiscally responsible adjustments to our instructional partnerships so that we have the highest quality and cutting edge resources for our educators, students, and our families. All of these resources closely support strategic plan goal pri priority one, increase academic achievement. The chart noted above shows the alignment to each of the resources and our strategic plan goals. Six of six of our resources to, that come forth to you tonight uh, align to priority goal 1A, 1B, and 1D, which support growth, proficiency, and personalized learning. And three of six of our resources um, align to goal 1C, and these are the resources that directly support graduation and, and have direct impact on our students in grades 9-12. We will continue to evaluate our instructional expenditures uh, for a return on investment um, by analyzing usage, connecting our resources to their impact on student achievement, and seeking feedback from our schools and our families. Tonight, I ask for approval of these purchases pending final determination of technical contract provisions regarding identification, protection of student records, and choice of law. I will turn it over to the board for question and discussion. I thank you so much for your time. Board members. Uh, I think it's just a, a, a quick technical question. So <clears throat> I'm, I'm so glad to see the comparison between last year and this year. Thank you for that transparency and kind of the full picture. Um, learning A to Z is not up for renewal this year, correct? It is, re it is up for renewal in fall 2020. Right. So while we, I, I just want to be clear, because I think because you've had the past two years, it also helps us project out to next year. If all of these are annual and that one comes back up, we would anticipate a, a potential rise a little bit. I just, I'm just kind of mapping. Yes, I will still work to, to work with Learning A to Z to always negotiate multi-year contracts so that we get the best cost and okay. also analyze that, that tool and its effectiveness in our K-5 schools. Thank you. I do want to say I appreciate the usage and now um, that you all are looking at how many students are logging in how long they're logging in I think a lot of times we have a lot of technology solutions but we don't always monitor them so I just want to appreciate and thank you all for that work because I think that needs to help drive our decision-making process so thank you yes I'd be curious just to see the usage and I know y'all have looked at it that's what you're telling us trust us that they're using it and I almost see this flipped in the future. Our teachers are using us. They say it helps them in this way, and this is why we need this, rather than here's what we're giving them, <laughs> we, you know, and we're going to train them to use it. Um, I always, always, always will be concerned that we are over-assessing students using poor metrics um, rather than maximizing their instructional time. So I'm going to be concerned about that with the uh, Certica, whether it was called Certica or TE21, um, and the Mastery Connect thing. I, I, you know, I trust teachers to say whether they're using it or not, and I assume you'll bring us back feedback about whether that's useful to them or not. Um, I'm sure to folks that are here, advocating um, for, for personnel and things that they believe schools need. These look like massive, massive contracts. And um, I appreciate you breaking it down on a cost per pupil basis. But I'd love in the future to have that usage to see whether people love it, I mean, and are using it rather than it sitting on the shelf. And, and I appreciate you retiring Discovery Education because that's, I believe, what you're telling us about that tool. Um, yes. Yeah. But. Um, 
I, I do take Matt's point that this isn't really a decrease. It's just that we're not paying for learning A to Z this year, and it'll it'll bump back up next year. So um, it's a lot of money, um, and I hope that it's I hope that our people find it effective working with students. Um, I'm going to trust you guys to bring us the usage to show that that's that's happening. Well, thank you. On that same um, line of thought, what has been some of the input from teachers as you're putting this together? Because you did speak to staff. You did have conversations with the teachers who were doing this, correct? Yes. Um, do you have in, in any particular contract I'm or you want me to go general, through all of them? Just in, no, please don't go through all of them. Okay. Just general, <laughs> general assessment of, of what you've been hearing from the people in the building at the, at the ground level. They appreciate the thoughtfulness that we have in getting their feedback and being responsive to their feedback. Um, some of the increases and decreases are based on the feedback from our principals, teachers, and our student needs. The discovery education um, usage, I do have that here, and I can add that, have that added uh, to the board packet. So we have analyzed that data over three years. We're listening to our teachers. Um, some teachers use it. Overall, our teachers uh, find that those resources were dated, some of those videos from early 90s. Um, and so we want to make sure that we have cutting edge resources in our hands. And in terms of Mastery Connect, we just want to make sure that we're providing, giving teachers back time, taking away that opportunity to sit down and grade by hand so that they have really uh, the opportunity to work as a PLC, look at the data, create instructional groups, and then Curriculum Associates also provides them that resources to respond to that small group instruction. So it's all connected, and we are getting our feedback from our stakeholders. But since we're saying goodbye to Discovery, I'll say one more time. I was one of those, I was that teacher that was using it, but I'm dated too. <laughs> <laughs> um, just want to add one addition on it. Ms. Sidberry did mention um, the use of Mastery Connect is also going to help us in the long term. We um, did have to purchase and work with our technology department in regards to scanners because teachers want to have the opportunity um, to to assess. And so during the long term, we're not going to have to replace those scanners because as you saw in the video, you can use any camera. And so we do see there is an initial investment here, but in the long term, it's going to save dollars over time for the school district. Um, we're trying to be very thoughtful in the resources that we're acquiring to support our teachers. <laughs> So the Scantron machines are going away. <laughs> Is that correct? I, I do want to be. I want to, I want to be at the ceremony. <laughs> when, when they get burned, you want, <laughs> Steve, you want to be there yes. when we when we toss them off the cliff. Toss them off the cliff. <laughs> I, I would happily s s toss a couple. Um, it's in, it, have you all seen that software work? Yes, uh, we have uh, schools that are early, early implementers. There's a free version, but we want to provide that access to our families. Um, this purchase will uh, allow access to the parent portal and allow us to look at a district level on how our students are progressing towards standards mastery. Uh, so Parkwood used it. A couple of other schools used it as high schools, but they're using that free version, and you don't have that way to provide parents access or to look cohesively across schools to find out what our instructional trends are. You know one of the high schools? What, what, which high school? I do not, but I will get you that okay, information. I, I would love to see it. Okay. Because I always know that the, the, the videos always look great. They're usually harder to use in person than, than the videos show. Uh, so I'd love to see it myself to see and how it works. Neil Middle School as well. Okay, great. Mr. Kaysen, were you done? I didn't want to cut you off. Okay. Um, so thank you. Uh, I, the, a couple of pieces I really was appreciative of. Uh, well, three. One, you didn't read. You, you actually didn't read the powerpoints to us. Uh, thank you for trusting that we can read. Uh, second, the, to group the 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 comparison, the financial comparison, and then to the extent that we can keep doing that, that's great and really helpful. Uh, and and I appreciate that you. I think that we asked you to do this, and you did to bring them all together as a package so we can see them at once. I think Ms. Byer makes the excellent point. It's a lot of money. Uh, it's helpful, I think, to see it all as a, a package so we can uh, assess it as a, as a group. Uh, on the Achieve 300? 3,000. 3,000? It's going up, sorry. 3,000. <laughs> uh, you, see, you see it was piloted at six schools, and then the, the contract is to continue it at those six schools? Um, we made some adjustments. So last year we had six schools. This year we are supporting five schools. Um, the implementation is heavily relying upon the consistent use 
in the building and also um, the vision of the principal. So some of the schools, a couple of the schools will be discontinuing, but they will have an alternate um, resource that they will be using for diagnostic and support. So these schools were selected based on their needs throughout the year. We are kind of analyzing the data formatively and looking at the cohort needs. And so we want to arm these schools with these resources so that we can amp, amp it up in their teachers and, and their students and get them towards mastery. So what would the, if, if, if there's a school that's not using this, what would they be using? Um, they will be using uh, Dreambox. They will be using Curriculum Associates, Diagnostic. Um, they, there are several tools out there that are vetted um, that we have in our district, but not at a district, like a, a large contract. So, so what I, I assume then what we're moving towards is being able to do a comparison of how this works relative to, to these others. Yes, sir. Which is, um, which is great. And that's, that's, I think, exactly what we need to be doing. So that's, uh, I, I look forward to seeing a, an actual comparison to see what moves uh, students the most. Um, on the, so on the, on the usage, you, you said there was one program that we stopped using because the usage was so low. Was that the discovery? That is. Okay. I just, I thought I, I had missed that, but that's, um, is, yeah, Xavier was the only one that used it in, in Turner Public Schools and hasn't used it in four years. Unless you're using it, you're not using it at home, are you? <laughs> I've got Netflix now. <laughs> uh, and the, um, and now I need a little help from you. Could, could you, um, could we get up there so that you can see and others can see the reading uh, analysis on pages 136 and 137. That's the, I think this is the, the actual deck at the end of the, the agenda pack. Oh, that's not the agenda pack. Okay. Yeah. So I apologize for, to folks in the audience. You're not going to be able to see this. Uh, it's yeah, online. It's online on the, in the I'm World sure pack. everybody will be pull, pulling it up. Uh, <laughs> so. Uh, when when we're looking at the this assessment, what what kind of reading level gain would we expect in a year if we didn't if, if we weren't using for just in general a in student and st in a year what would a student do a, a one? Yeah, so in general, we would expect a student to um, get on grade level as they progress. So year to year to year, one grade level. Okay, so anything above one is positive, basically. Yes, sir. Okay, and then uh, where it says percent at or close to grade level, uh, that's, I assume that's the students that are using the program, is that correct? The um, percentage at or close to grade level are those students that are reading on their designated grade level. So a sixth grader reading on a sixth grade level. Right. Uh, the, all of these students that are selected for reading plus are two to three years behind their grade level. So this is a catch up tool trying to get, give them additional instruction outside of the classroom time that will leverage them and move them towards big, being college and career ready. So we're in essence trying to make up ground um, and get them back on grade level. Okay, so so if, so if I see a number that says 21% at or close to grade level, presumably going into the year- Zero that, percent. That, yeah, because they, that's the reason they're in the program, that is they're correct. not at grade level. Yes, sir. Uh, so again, any of those numbers are, are good. They do look like they're all over the place, and I don't know to what extent we're working with the teachers or the, or the schools to see what, you know, like uh, Lucas Middle School is 60%, which is tremendous. Um, Go Leopards. Yes, well, I'm sure it's the Lee family by themselves bringing that up. <laughs> but, um, but then, you know, there's another school that's 15%. Right. So are, what are we doing to work with that, with that school to see if we can, what to learn from what, what's happening at these schools that are being successful? 
But we are partnering with our principals and our principal supervisors to provide support. In addition to that, um, in the instructional priorities that were established in collaboration with the principals, um, we have a standard a period of time at each grade level, um, at each grade band, at elementary, middle, and high, that is a designated intervention or enrichment block. That was absent last year. We did not have that as a standard in Durham Public Schools. And so now we have, through strategic planning with our principals and schools, having a lot period in, a, in the day that the students will be able to have access to this program. And so the spottiness is implementation as well as having a standard period. So some teachers were trying to find time within the day to make this happen and they may or may not have had that opportunity. But we as a standard with our VR our academic priorities have that time reserved in the day to, to support all these intervention and enrichments. Okay, I look forward to seeing how that, that works. Great. Uh, and then my last question, the, on the, the and I, this is kind of off, but th so the, the state superintendent has changed the software <laughs> because he didn't think that you had enough to do uh, for, <laughs> for our, our K-3 uh, teachers. Is that any, does that show up anywhere in all this? It does not show up in this particular presentation. This is specifically partnerships where we have to use our state, local, or federal dollars. Um, the K-3 initiative and the assessments that we use from the state, they provide those, um, that assessment to us. So we are so not- it's not in here because we don't have a separate contract to do it. Okay. Right. Okay. So at some point you will bring us up to date about how that's affecting our teachers. Absolutely. We are monitoring it very carefully well, and the, closely. The latest was it's frozen, right? I mean, it, that has gotten jammed again by court action. Is that right? Administrative. Administrative. That's much kinder. <laughs> yes. Technology. Yes. yes. Yeah. The Office of Technology. Yes. So basically, we're starting school supporting what we were doing last year, M class. Is that or? We, as many districts across the state, had already began um, training with our teachers for I-Station administration. Um, LEAs will be required at previously before the most recent, uh, I think Tuesday evening, required to administer in middle of the year and end of the year. We've been working with our year-round schools so that we could um, have um, the opportunity to provide that beginning of the year assessment. Um, at this time, um, many of the LEAs are monitoring. Um, we're continuing with training so that we, depending on what decisions are made, we are ready. We know that we want to make sure that we provide support to our most vulnerable elementary schools so they have information regarding what the needs of our children are so that we can support them. Um, and that is the intent of our K-3 uh, literacy initiative is that we support our children with their reading development. And we're committed to doing that and to working with our teachers so that they have the tools and resources to do so. That was nicely said for a total. Mm -hmm. um, I won't say what it is. but. Dr. Hardy and Sidbury, Dr. Sidbury, want to thank you all for being committed and find, first of all, saving us money, getting rid of those programs that are on the shelf and we're not using, but also understanding that this is an ongoing process and to get our children to be more literate, to be more proficient, and it doesn't just stop at elementary, but we're going all the way up to high school. So that is, that. I, I don't know if we've ignored secondary literacy, but I don't know if we put as much um, intentionality behind it as we need to so that when our children graduate, when they cross the stage, they are ready uh, for career and college. Thank you for, for working on that. And community, we've got to make sure that we celebrate that, that we work on that we make sure that our children, a uh, majority of many of our children that are going into college are not reading on the eighth grade level. So we've got to, um, we've got to work hard and celebrate and make, as we talk about this um, intelligent community that we have here in Durham, we've got to make sure that we're a literate one and that our children can read. 
and they can read proficiently. So um, that's something we need to have all of our children reading. And, and, and so I'm glad we're doing that focus, not just testing them to death, but uh, making sure they read proficiently. Thank you for, for doing that. And it costs money. Yeah, it costs a million dollars. We got 33,000 children. It costs money. But when they don't read, it costs more money. I was going to go in the other direction with the early childhood. And just, you know, as we're looking at what's happening here um, in our schools, you know, the early education community has challenged us in the last um, joint meeting with the commissioners to, to, be, to partner in different ways and deeper ways with the early education community. I know, Dr. Hardy, you've been on several committees with me in that regard, so just want to put that out there. So she's talking about the high schools. I want to talk about the those babies. who are the babies. And so that when they get to our schools, they're even more ready than they are at this present time. So I want to look at the entire spectrum. And I'm glad you mentioned that about the county commissioners because when we talk about rallying and when we talk about what's important to us here in Durham, we need to make sure that that is for front and center, period. Like Deidre said, point blank, period. We need to make sure that when we talk about putting the money where, you know, where, where, where we really need it, um, walking the talk that we have, then we need to make sure that our children, that we ask our county commissioners. So we want our community to, again to rally. Like you said, Renee, let's go down there and rally. We're going to get it done. Let's get it done. Okay. All right. All right. And I just had one comment and, um, and um, is everybody else done? All right. So I appreciate, I really appreciate this. I like the way it's broken down with the numbers and everything like that. And I really appreciate the uh, reading plus results that you guys had. Uh, one of the things that uh, myself and uh, Matt, when we first joined the board, we were, um, when we were asked to do contracts, you know, and especially renewals, um, what we're looking for is not necessarily that we have to, uh, not when we have to renew the contract, but why. Okay, the why, why behind it. And so I would ask, just like we did with Reading Plus, when these come back, I, I don't think all of these are new. I think there's a few of them that are new. When they come up for renewal, uh, that sort of information. Um, usage is one thing, right? People can use it, but it just doesn't work, right? It doesn't move any needles. Uh, what I would ask for is, um, just on top of usage, is what is it moving? Is it actually moving the needle where we're actually implementing it? And what do those results look like? Um, it, it, I know it puts you guys more on a defensive stand, but I think it's important to defend something that you want to use by using the successes, right? And it's not for an attack or anything, it's just we wanna make sure that, yeah, people are using it, but we wanna make sure it's actually doing what we uh, what we envision it to do, right? And that, um, what you guys did for Reading Plus, is doing exactly what we, we're envisioning this tool. To, we're getting the value out of that. And, um, and so when these come back up and for the administration, when there are contracts, you know, IT or whatever it might be, I, w I would like us to have that sort of uh, return on investment conversation that you talked about, Ms. Sidberry, um, that, that conversation as to this is why, you know. I think the, the need and the timing can follow, but this is why we want to continue using this, or, you know, we still need some more time to get more data, or it's just not working, right? And this is why we're going somewhere else. Okay, so that, that's all I would ask there. I, I, this is great information. I look forward to seeing, you know, the results, more results like Reading Plus, but I really appreciate you all. Yeah. Hands to mind is um, manipulatives. Yes. Um, will it be a recurring expense um, for upper grade levels? It will. This right now will cover all of our K-2 teachers, and then when we uh, implement uh, Eureka Mathematics for grades 3-5, we would have an investment on the kits um, for the 3-5 teachers as well. And then hopefully that would be the end of that re expense. 
We will support our schools with using their local allocations towards replenishing things as kids lose or drop or break. And there's there's no others that don't recur as as far as. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. That's helpful. All right. So uh, I'm sorry, Bettina. No, I've been taking notes. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Yeah. Yeah. I got it. I got it. <laughs> and so what uh, what Dr. Hardy and Ms. Sidbury are looking for is um, approval of these contracts, correct? The presented contracts. Mm -hmm. Have some language. We would oh, like. specific language. Yes, Ken told me to read oh, this. Okay. So you can, you guys can read it, and we'll just say some. Uh, like. I yeah, I'm feeling left out. We will continue to evaluate. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the second paragraph. Okay. Uh, I move approval of the contracts um, presented tonight in the packet um, pending final determination of technical contract provisions regarding indemnification, protection of student records, and choice of laws. 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 These agreements, uh, depending on where the company is based, would have us litigating disputes in New Jersey, California, Utah, et cetera. Pause, but now I get it. <laughs> that's actually choice of venue, but anyway, that's okay. I'll second that motion. All right, a motion is on the floor, read by Matt. Uh, well, Mr. Sears. Um, any further discussion? All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, please use the same sign. Passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay. So. I will, I'll accept a motion to go into closed session for the reasons stated on the agenda. So moved. Second. Okay, all right. It's been, <laughs> it's been moved and properly seconded that we go into the closed session for the reasons stated on the agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. <laughs> Passes unanimously. We are now in closed session.
They don't do intermissions anymore. Oh, my mercy. Okay, it's coming. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bathrooms are not allowed. Yeah, right after you guys clobbered us earlier. Hear ye, hear ye. <laughs> All righty. We are now back in open session. Dr. Mavenga. Board members, I'm here to seek your approval for the personnel report as discussed at the closed session. Approval of the personnel report dated August 22nd, 2019. Second. It's been moved and properly seconded that we approve the personnel report dated August 22nd, 2019. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, please use the same sign. It passes unanimously. And with that, we are adjourned.